Hey everyone, in this video we'll learn about ray tracing. When you look at a scene like this, what do you see? Mountains, water, trees? That's what you think you see. But what you actually see are photons, particles of light that enter your eye and hit your retina. These photons travel a long, long way to get to you. For example, this one starts at the sun, travels a hundred million miles, hits the mountain, bounces off, hits the lake, bounces off again, and then enters your eye. And that's just one photon. The image you're seeing is generated from billions of photons that can bounce dozens of times before they reach your eye. You can think of the universe as an incredibly fast image rendering machine that traces zillions of photons simultaneously and runs at the speed of light. But even the universe takes about eight minutes to generate this image as those photons travel across space. Now suppose we wanted to produce an image like this using computer graphics. We could simulate a sun that sends out lots of photons and trace the path of each one as it moves through space, bouncing off objects like mountains and lakes. But since our computers don't run at the speed of light, we'll need some clever tricks to render images at reasonable speeds. This is what ray tracing is all about. The first big insight is that tracing all of the rays from the sun is pretty wasteful as only a tiny fraction of those photons actually get to your eye. So instead of tracing from the sun forwards, let's trace from your eye backwards throughout the scene. This way we can focus only on the rays that actually hit your eye. We'll draw backwards traced rays in black instead of yellow. Let's model the image as a plane in front of the eye and consider this pixel in the image. If we trace a ray from the eye through this pixel, it intersects the scene at this point on the mountain. Now let's trace a second ray from the scene point to the light source. If it hits something on the way to the light source, then it's in shadow. So we give the image pixel a dark shadow color. But if the reflected ray hits the light source, we'll give the pixel a mountain color. More precisely, we'll calculate what proportion of the light gets reflected off the object in the direction of the eye. This process is called shading, and it depends on the reflectance properties of the surface. Check out our videos on reflection, linked here for more details. Cool, we now have a simple rendering algorithm. Send a ray from the eye through each pixel and find the first point of intersection with the scene. Cast rays from these intersection points to the light source and shade each point that's not in shadow. Here's a computer graphics mountain scene. If we apply our simple ray tracing algorithm, we get an image like this. Why is the lake black? It's missing the reflection of the mountain. That requires two bounces of light. When the ray from the eye hits a specular surface like the lake, we need to cast an additional reflection ray. This reflected ray hits the mountain and is shaded by the sun. If we add these reflection rays back to our ray tracer, instead of the black lake, we get this image. This is looking better. But how about the rocks under the surface? Here's what it's supposed to look like. Can you see them? Look at the bottom of the image. Here it is without the rocks, and with the rocks. The lake is transparent, so some of the light from the sun passes through the surface of the lake, hits a rock, and is reflected to the eye. Let's zoom in a bit to get a better view of what's going on here. As a ray passes through the surface of the lake, it bends, an effect known as refraction. It then hits the rock, bounces off, and refracts again as it exits on the path to the eye. So when we look at this point in the lake, we will see two different light paths at the same time, one from the mountain reflected off the surface and another from the rock underneath refracted through the surface. The ability of ray tracing to combine multiple light paths like this makes a big difference toward photorealism. This may sound like a lot to keep track of, but ray tracers are actually pretty straightforward. In fact, you can fit the code on the back of a business card. This one implements all of the effects that we've talked about. Stay tuned for part two, where we implement a ray tracer.